All right, so we're ready to go. Okay. So you can just go ahead. Okay. Because it's running already? Yeah. Oh. Well, you... Food. I like that. I like that. So, that's nice. I like doing this. It's like an animal on my face. Welcome to another episode of Made Up. I am your host, Danny Volk, and we are in the studio of Popel, visual artist working um, on faculty here at the University of Chicago. Thanks for having us in your studio. Thanks, Danny. So, um, are you... What's, what's going on? Yeah? Should I refer to you by a different name? No, that's good. Okay. Good. The name you referred to me as is great. Popel. Yes. All right. That's good. This should be exciting. Yes, I think so. Danny, are you ready to be made up? Let's do it. Okay. Popel, tell us a bit about your studio. Well, it's here. I don't come here to work very much, though. You don't? No, a lot happens here, but without me. And so, where do you do most of your work? A lot of times off-site, away from home, um, because I work in performance, or I shoot film, or I do projects that are more, uh, how do you say, site-specific, mm -hmm. I guess, or I just don't like being at home, or something. These walls are, have got some work on them. Is this um, mostly archives for you? It's just, you know, stuff that um, I brought from you when I came here from Maine. Uh -huh. So um, I have to see whether it's molding or whatever. Some of the, the stuff I brought. I lived in Maine for 20 years and I've been here for three and a half, four years. So what have you been working on? Actually, I've been trying to think about um, just where my practice is in the last 30 years and I, I, I guess, you know, 30 years seems like a long time to be making art, I mean, but, I mean, I used to think it was a long time, but after you're sort of done it, then it seems like, well, what is that time? Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm on sabbatical now, and part of it's just been thinking about, you know, what is it that I have been doing, and what is it I want to do? I get involved in a lot of projects, but um, it just seems I spend a lot of time thinking about why I do it. After, I think, even one project, you get kind of clogged, you know, mm -hmm. with the project, and you have to unstop the clog, clean it out. You need to sort of process what it is that went before you can do the next. Okay. But life doesn't always allow you to do that. So it tends to be a build-up. If I can use a plumbing metaphor. Um, we, we're, we're, those are strictly forbidden on this show. Yes. I sense that, mm -hmm. but I, you know, the there's subversive little, artist, you know, always. Yeah, they're just a little too close to home for me. Mm. So you're coming back to the University of Chicago in the fall of 2014? That's what I plan to do. And um, tell me a bit about your time at UFC. Like, what are you doing and what do you like? Well, I teach art for 20 years. You know, I taught film and I've taught like a class about you know, the black play, pre-Civil War to now. Mm -hmm. And here I don't teach things like that. Do you want to be? Well, this is a thing of territory you have to figure out. You can't necessarily do that in our context here. Uh -huh. You know, people already teach history, blah, blah, literary, blah, blah. And why are you in art doing that? And to trick it, I haven't figured out how to trick it. You see, remember the old days you used to do this. People used to go like that. They would, to they the would face? Hold yeah, well, well, yeah, why not? They, but you, you'd have to, like, go boom. It's actually it's kind of disconcerting. But didn't they do that to measure the distance of something? That's how I, like, you'd say, oh, that tree is or that fuck big. fuck you, or something. Can you, can you put that in there? Yeah, we're allowed to cuss. Is that what you're asking? But no one curses in your thing, they noticed. No oh, really? one is cursed. Do you want to say it a couple times just to land Well, it? the first time so much effective. Fuck, 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 fuck. All right. So tell me why one should come to UFC as a graduate student or undergraduate student. Hmm. That was good. They should come here because I think we think about learning um, in a layered way. I think that we 
in terms of just practical things like we spend a lot of time trying to work with students. I mean, those students that let us in. And myself, you know, for example, this year I'm on leave, but I've tried to attend as many reviews as I can. Um, I think that faculty here, and this is something that you kind of have to, you know, believe, but I think they actually like teaching, and I think they think teaching is important, and I think they like it. I mean, there are some schools where you can see the professors, you know, uh, struggling. Do you like teaching? Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think that's an issue here. Um, do you want to talk about your mask at all? Or My masks in general? Well, I think, you know, I think, I think it was, I forget who it was. I think it was Fanon, if I'm not correct, or it was either Fanon or um, Franz Fanon, or it was Ishmael Reed. Um, a really great black novelist who said masks are necessary. But what I think he meant is that um, whether you wear something as literal as this, it must be interesting to do that. <laughs> or, you know, but just in life, you have to, you have to, we're in a veiled culture. It is part of our capital as humans. And whether we like it or not, we have these things that we, we don, whether they're vinyl or latex or the very skin we breathe through. So I'm sort of being a little over emphatic here. You don't, you, don't, like, you don't wear like four or five masks in a day. Sure, but don't you sort of convince yourself or delude yourself into thinking that some of those masks are actually who you are? Like I think without masks, identity is very hard. And I think with, with them, there's easier. Huh. Well, you know, it's like, you know, very existential, but uh, I don't know, it's like, uh, it's part of our nature not to be who we are. I don't know how You one... should saw his face when, he, when I just said that. He had that, like, Danny reaction thing. I gotta look over there. I'm, I'm looking over there, it's I'm looking this over one. here. Yeah, it's that one, but there's no camera on my face yet. Yeah, I know, you see, he gets this thing where he doesn't get any kind of, like, yeah, that's except at the end. Do you think there's Can a you do that when we turn and you would be revealed? Can you sure, do but you have to say it again because I don't remember what I did. You know, you do that thing when you raise your eyebrow and then you, your little mouth goes up slightly when you have oh. that moment. What the hell is he talking about? Well, I mean, I just... You, so you think there's some true self? I thought that was your line. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> that, was, that was my line. You know, because you usually say that there isn't. Right. Yeah. But you you're saying that you think there is. I think that's really hard to determine and a negotiation is more interesting. I like that, that it's that identity is a negotiation of masks. I think that's really Yeah, just do a good performance and then people say, Hey, yeah, yeah that's okay, you know, right. it's all right. Right. You know? And then uh, and then you do it so many times that even you say, Well shit, I may not have known that it was bona fide or authentic. But maybe authenticity is overrated. Authenticity is merely a performance of some sort of legitimacy, right? I mean, I'm authentic. This mm. is how authentic looks. I think you're right. And a handsome authenticity it is. Should we reveal this? Yeah. Do you want to say anything about this? Uh, a handsome authenticity. Popel, thank you for having us in your studio. Well, it was nice having you. It was a pleasure. I always enjoy talking to you. I'm going to... I'm leaving next year, but I'm going to miss having you in my life. Vice versa, man. <laughs> Thank you. This has been Made Up with Danny Volk. We'll see you next time. Just